you know, if somebody kept thanking me for what I did and they needed a favor, I'd sure be quick to do it. I'd be happy to do it. Now, I'm not saying God's going to be slow on you because you're not grateful, but maybe you're just slow on him. I'm sure if something's slow, it's probably you, not God, since he moves in a chariot that goes the speed of light. Amen? Amen. So Kim said she had a testimony. I want her to come up and give her testimony. Go ahead, Kim, come up here. Glory to God. Say, we love you, Kim. Were the hardens around when you all? Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, so um, I'm pretty sure you all don't know the miracles that have happened in my life. <clears throat> About 10 years ago, we adopted our son. He was told he would never have children. I have my Abigail, who's now 16 and just beautiful. She's taller than a grandfather. So. <clears throat> so that was our first miracle, our first grandchild. Absolutely amazing, awesome, beautiful, talented. <clears throat> then my oldest daughter, who has Lily, who is now three, <clears throat> she was a breach at 38 weeks. Um, so a week later, she was delivered naturally. Awesome. Yes. Um, so we just found out my youngest daughter, um, who is going to be the baby brother to that one over there, little Henri thing that he is, um, we found out that Dominic was breech a week ago. <clears throat> now then, my husband works at the children's hospital, and he was talking to one of the neotologists, and... This baby went from being breech to being in the correct position. And the neotologist told my husband, that never happens. I said, it happened twice with my grandchildren. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, prayer works. I'm just going to say that. Uh, we laid hands on my daughter and... We told our grandson that he needs to be in the correct position so that his mama doesn't have to be cut open. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, the scheduled C-section is probably going to be canceled after this week. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So, <clears throat> I have had three amazing miracles with my grandchildren. <clears throat> and it's all because of God. It's all because of God. Kim, 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 come here. Give me a real hug. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Come on, let's let's thank God like that was you like that was your grandchild. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I love God's like he corners that it never happens market. Have you noticed that? He corners that it never happens, Mark. And glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just hold on. I'm just taking it all in spiritually. Wow. It's, uh, for those of you who don't know, this Will and Mary Bell Esman, and they, uh, they were with us when, Took a lot more running to keep up with everything that goes on, you know. But uh, glory to God. I just, it's so good to see you guys. So good. They came up from Florida. Praise the Lord. And uh, I am I told them I'm a little at a disadvantage because they've been watching me on the Internet. And uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe I should have shown you that the congregation has uh, changed a little. But uh, 
we sold the building and then got rid of all the unbelieving believers. And no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, we just, uh, I don't know. But anyway, praise God. It's good to have you guys. Good to have you. And, you know, Will said something that I said. You got to watch saying stuff around people with good memories because it will come back. And I'm glad when it came back, I agreed with it. But uh, we'll come up here just a minute and just share what you heard me say. And, and am I right, Will, that when we first got together, it's Will Espen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, when, when we first got together, out there in, it was in Oldham County, right? We, we would, or your house, no, it's down uh, past uh, Brook. I don't know. No, I mean where you all lived. Yeah, you forgot, but I remembered, see? <laughs> but anyway, didn't you tell me about how you would listen to Copeland when you were a, when you were a hippie? Yeah, he told me, he said, man. It would, now, this was before he met me, but still. He wasn't ashamed of it. He said, man, Copeland sounds great when you got good weed, you know. And, and he said, you think weed's good? You ought to hear him on uh, cocaine or whatever it was. I don't know. And I went, this is one of my flock. As soon as I heard him talk like that, I went, you know, because. But anyway, um, not a religious bone in his body, praise God. But, I mean, we taught faith. They would grab it instantly, instantly. Yeah, share just a little. and <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. Um, believe it or not, it's been probably 35, maybe close to 40 years when we met this guy. And we were so blessed because at the time, I mean, you know, uh, not to do too much history, but uh, my wife, we've been together over 50 years since high school. Yeah. But um, I don't know honestly why sometimes – Things don't work out or bad things happen to good people. That's my opinion. But um, she was involved in an automobile accident. She got hit by a drunk driver. She fell on the street. A Jeep fell on top of her. Four years in the hospital, 119 operations. But through all that, she never doubted the promises of God. And that's really what us got through it. We met this guy. He was preaching not what everybody in the world was preaching. We were telling him about all the victories that we had, you know, that how God had moved on his word. And he said, well, let me ask you something. And I stared at him and he said, are you praying for victory or are you praying from victory? And that, the light, it was like a light went off. You know, the promises were already there. It's our job through grace to find out what's already been done. We're not trying to get God to do anything. He's already done it. It's our job to find out what the Word said, what he's already done. And when you're willing to stand on that, then you get the promise. You know, the Word, the word said, God said, since faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, God said, your faith will be determined on how much of my word that you're willing to stand on because I'm willing to stand on all of it. <laughs> yeah, there it is, you know. Yeah, my favorite song, honestly, real quick is, it's, a, it's Shout to the Lord, and the last lyrics are, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. And there, it's in a nutshell. You know, nothing compares. How can, there, we don't compare anything to the promise. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's all whatever. But we're just blessed to be here. We're so happy to see Don. I mean, he's still Don, you know. <laughs> the word, he still got it, you know. I said, I just, we'd love to, you know, like I said, we do watch him on the Internet. You know, we're like, well, we're not going to miss that sermon, and he still got it. So we're just so thankful that you're still preaching the word. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God bless you, buddy. You too, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I'm, I'm still me because all the other people were taken. So I'm just going to stick with me. Glory to God. 
Everybody say, we love you, Will. You know, it talk about what you went through. So a Jeep was on you. So, you know, it's funny how people say, well, I don't know why, blah, blah, blah. Forget why. You were supposed to be dead. I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you did. How many how many know uh Tim McMurray? Yeah, he hit the side of a um pickup truck on his motorcycle going really fast. And uh when they found him, he was just laying in a puddle of his own blood. Not a puddle, a pond. And uh he said, you know, Pastor, I, I, I'm not sure. He said, I think I died. He did, It felt like what was going on spiritually around me that I died. He said, but this Pentecostal woman was the first one to get to me. Isn't it neat how God has his paramedics? And he said, she got to me and started praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, I remember becoming conscious of it and conscious of what was going on. And he said, you know, it began to move through the progressions. You know, got Tim's body to the hospital. So the doctor says he's not going to live. Then the doctor comes out and goes, well, he's going to live, but he's not going, he's going to be a vegetable. Then he comes out and goes, well, he is conscious but he's not going to be able to walk or talk or do anything. And then the next thing you know, well, he he's, and then it kept everything the doctor said, he's not going to be able to, then the doctor had to come back out and go, well, we were wrong. Now, when you meet Tim, you'd never know that he was supposed to be a paraplegic. You'd never know it, but Tim knows it. Tim knows it. You know, we are not in the test. We are in our testimony. Are you hearing me? We are not in the test. We are in our testimony. Are you hearing me? So, you know, you decide. But I've watched too many times where it wasn't supposed to work, and then God showed up and said, this is simple. Amen. Praise God. Wait, I'm not going to. Praise the Lord. Well, there, that's a lot easier. I need both my hands to talk, you know. Hallelujah. Emily, can you come up here just a moment? Actually, can Lizzie come up here? Do you remember Emily? Yeah. This is homecoming week, I guess. Yeah. And look what happened. Look what happened. Olivia. Olivia. You say hi. She can see you guys now. Hey, baby <laughs> doll. And it's so funny because, oh, uh, Emily is a producer. She's done films, so she always makes sure I'm in the right place with the camera. But, um, you know, it's just, it's amazing how God has moved her life. It's like, I, I never forget just... Wasn't too long ago, we were in a closing room, and you and Jeffrey were buying a house. Yeah. Well, we did all of it in one year. I know. Married house baby. Married house baby in one year. All in one year. Yeah, and it was so funny because here they're signing these uh, papers for a 30-year mortgage, and I went, okay, well, I guess he is committed to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then, then we got through the wedding ceremony and we're in the reception and there's Emily sitting beside me as you know I've performed the wedding and there's Emily sitting beside me in her big dress and I go well honey you bought a house and you got married what are you going to do next I'm getting pregnant <laughs> I went you know I wasn't ready for that one I'm getting pregnant real quick she said dad I'm I'm what, what is it 26 36 I'm 36 she said, 
my clock's ticking away. And so I'm going to get pregnant right now. And so, and it worked. The so next, the next month, yeah. The next month she was pregnant. And so here she is. Man, we thank God for her. Amen. She found her thumb today. She officially found the thumb on the way to church. So she's playing with it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, honey. Yeah. I love you. Praise the Lord. Well, Are y'all ready for the word? Take your Bibles and lift them up into the air and say this. Say, this is my Bible. Say, I believe what it says. What it says I have, I have. What it says I can do, I can do it. What it says I am, I am that. In Jesus' name. Here it is. See, I believe this word more than what my relatives say, my friends say, or my enemies say. Glory to God. You know who your number one enemy is? The devil. Well, now, for some people, that's not true. Uh, their number one enemy is themselves and their own tongue. But nevertheless, you got to believe that word. You know what? That word created the planets. And we're still finding some. And it created all of them. I don't think your mortgage payment is a big job. I don't think healing you is that big a job compared to what God's word has done. So let's learn how this living by faith thing works. Remember I told you, what was it? about four, five, six weeks ago, that it concerns me that Christians are not stable. They're tossed to and fro, what does Ephesians say, by every wind of doctrine. Now, the word doctrine in the Hebrew uh, means to grasp or to receive, and it means instruction. So doctrine is the structure of heaven going in you. And that way, it's easy for heaven's stuff to go in you because you've already got its structure in you. Amen. It's like a puzzle. Your structures fit the stuff heaven wants to give you. But what happens is most Christians don't want the instruction. And so we gotta, we got to learn to learn. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word. We thank you, sir. Yeah, I know. know. And we give you praise. We give you praise. Well, glory to God. We give you praise. Glory to God. So, I want us to learn to live by faith. What we do is we fight fights of faith. So it has a start and a finish. But if you live by faith, there is no start and finish. It's just always there. I'll never forget hearing somebody tell Brother Copeland, oh, you're a fanatic. You probably pray for parking places. I knew it. You were a nut. And he said, I always do. He said, you're a nut. And he said, no, I'm not a nut. You're the nut. I'm parked. <laughs> you're driving around still looking. Now, that's important to me because I just came from New York where a parking place, when it appears, is like a miracle. For <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, we are going to receive the tithes and the offerings. Now, you say, well, I thought we just did a... That was first fruits. Man, I'm Dr. Summerall's son. I was in a meeting where I think he took up to 12 offerings. And uh, he go, oh, there's so-and-so. He's a missionary. Come on up here. And then he go, we're going to take up an offering for him. You know, and it just, but uh, we're going to take up the tithes and the offerings. Open your Bible, if you would, please, to Malachi.
See, I come from Baptist background, so my Bible just kind of falls open to Malachi three, uh, uh, Malachi chapter three. But uh, look at the wood, please here. It says in Malachi chapter three, verse six. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Did you find it? Amen. All right. So what does that say? You know, sometimes we miss the verses before the uh, and after the uh, verse we know. It's kind of like the verses before, we're just kind of revving up to get to the one we know. And then the ones after, well, the afterburners, I mean, the, you know, you know, the reverse thrusters, are, we've landed, we're trying to stop it now, but we need, we need to listen to what God said. He said, because I change not, you're not consumed. Amen. Have, how many of you all have changed for the worse in some things at times in your life? How many would not want us to play on the video some of your worst days? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, somebody said, well, I can't believe what you did. What? God forgot it. Don't remind him. Amen? And so it's not because we change or change not. It's because he changes not. That's why we're not consumed. You've got to, as soon as you find God changing, let me know because we've had it. Because he said, you're not consumed because of me, not because of you. It's not what you do, it's what I am. It's who I am. So he said, even from the days of your fathers. Now look at this, verse 7. Boy, that sucks. That goes back to times when I wasn't even around. From the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances. Did you know that your disobedience was in the DNA of your generations? God recorded that. He said, from the day of your fathers, you've gone away from my ordinances and not kept them. Return unto me, and I'll return unto you, saith the Lord of the militant armies of heaven. But you said, wherein shall we return? All right, so look at this. Here's all these ordinances. And listen, God told Israel, you have run away from all of them. Return to me, and I'll return to you. And they go, well, wherein shall we return? Like, come on, God, there's a lot of ordinances there. Which one do you want us to return on? He picked tithing as the ordinance he wanted you to start with. Because the next verses are about, will a man rob God? Do you, why would God pick tithing? Because he's a loving God and wants you blessed. Amen. Amen. He is tired of you living without the covering of an open heaven. See, in the spirit, your covering is openness. It's open, an open heaven. That's your covering. That's what's over you. And so God said, will you rob me? You've robbed me in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse because you robbed me. So God is all about getting rid of the curse. That's what he did in Christ. Cursed is he who hangs upon a tree. Do you hear me? So in other words, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all of them. So I'm going to pray. 
and we're going to receive the tithes and the offerings. Glory to God. Jesse, does this work? It does. We don't do it because it works. We just, it works because we do it. Because we're obedient. Amen. Did water baptism save you? But when you got saved, how many of you all were willing to be baptized? Right. Does communion save you? But as a believer, how many are willing to flow in the obedience of having his body and blood? Tithing is not what saves us, but it's obedience. Somebody said, well, if baptism in water doesn't save you, why did we do it? He said, it's more about why don't you? If you had God give his son and then he asked you to just take that symbolically by faith and act out your faith and you said no, why would you say no to him? Amen. And we've talked about this. Well, Mary Bell, I think you'll enjoy this. If I had 10 Harley Davidsons up here, all identical, and I said, now this is what they're worth, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna look at each one. But now this one over here at the end, Elvis Presley owned it. Which one would you want to take home? That one, right? Wouldn't it be worth more because of who owned it? So you've got a dollar that you earned 10 dimes, nine of them are yours, but one dime belonged to God. Is that worth 10 cents or is that worth infinity? Why does God give you what belongs to him so you can give it back? Because it's so valuable, he wants to record in heaven's journals that value of your giving so he can open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings you can't even hold. And that's what tithing is all about. And that's why God said, we're going to start there. Because I want my storehouse filled and I want my children blessed. Yeah. Amen? Now, we have his storehouse and we are his children. So how many are ready for some more blessing? Amen, 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 amen. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings, we give you praise that we are not thieves. We are not temple thieves. We thank you for it. Why would we rob from someone who gives us everything? We thank you for it. We thank you that you have given to us what, you, what belongs to you so that when we give it back, it's recorded in the value that it gained by your ownership. And I thank you for it, sir. And I give you praise. And now, Lord, let the firmament hear that the windows must open. The pleroma, the living water must come through. And I thank you, sir. That living water will start the well flowing on the inside of us till it flows out everywhere in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. I mean, you better watch, believe in this stuff because it'll happen and then you'll be like, uh-oh, amen. Glory to God. If you need an envelope for cash giving, raise your hand. And uh, thank you, Jesse. Praise God. You know, I was, I was uh, having a powwow with the Lord this morning at Starbucks. He goes to Starbucks. I know he goes because I take him. <laughs> Amen. And uh, did everybody get the opportunity? To get? And... Uh, how many have ever had the Lord show you something, but you couldn't necessarily put it in words? 
And then there's times the Lord will speak something. So you could literally quote what he says. This morning, it was more like I saw this. And it was like his children are desiring mental, their mental curiosity, their mental, they want, they want something new. They want something. It's like entertainment. And no, God's not here to entertain you. God's not here to keep your attention. God's here to see if your attention is obedient to him. Are you hearing me? And I kept thinking, Lord, I repent of the pressure of wanting to bring something new to my congregation. You know, if you're always looking for a new revelation, one day you're going to get bit because, nope, not doing it. But um, so having said that, I'm ready to share with you some things that will pretty much sound like heresy, I'm sure, <laughs> or some weird doctrine. But no, listen, why was God so, why did God consider it so important that Adam and woman were naked? You know, God did not build the garden to be a nudist colony. He didn't. They had clothes on when he made them. Their clothes was the glory of God coming out of them. And that light went off. Listen to me. They ate the fruit that was forbidden. They got in confederacy with the serpent. They did some things that screwed up the whole creation. They gave up their place of authority. Are you hearing me? It was at least a Monday the day they fell. <laughs> How many are hearing me? And in all of that, God shows up and he does a property inspection as he walks through the garden. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. See, you need to learn the voice angels hearken to. And the voice, when you hear it, brings faith. That voice walks. And so they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the wind of the day, the ruach of the day, the angels of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. How many want to live in God's presence? Isn't that sad to get to a point where you can tell the presence of God's there and you go hide yourself from it? And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? All right, I want you to write down there, God did not see them. Oh, God can do all things. No, this is the part of God we're talking about right now. God didn't see them. I asked the Lord when I was going through something, I said, did you even see me? He said, did you see me? Were you there? I'm everywhere. He said, I wasn't able to see you because you weren't able to see me. Let me, just, let me just bottom line it. It's never going to be God's fault. So just stop it. You're wasting your breath, which is limited. You don't want to waste it. It's never going to be God's fault. I love that about Brother Hagin. Lord, nah, I don't, why didn't that work? Now, I know it's me, not you. Never, it's not you. It's got to be me. And the Lord did speak to him. He said, man, I just, I just reached down, made a little adjustment. I repented. I said, I don't know about these Christians. It takes them forever to repent. Because the Bible says, repent and believe the gospel. If you have a bad attitude about good news, you've got some sin, iniquity, or transgression. You need some serious repenting. Amen. 
Turn around and somebody say, I think he looked right at you when he said that. But anyway, it says they hid themselves amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? I don't want God to ever say to me, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. Wait, I thought his voice was to bring faith, not fear. Write this down. Write this down. God's voice will make you afraid when the devil convinces you you're the one that needs to do it. You're not the one to do it. He does it. He gives the grace. He does the works in you. Somebody say amen. He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. All right. So they have done a long litany, Emily, of stuff they should be ashamed of by any human standard. It's like, you did what? The God of heaven and earth told you not to eat it, and you did? What, what were you thinking? What I'm thinking. I was just one moment I'm thinking. I mean, how I many know humanity was kind of like toddler? Why did you eat the cookie? I don't know. Why did you lie? I don't know. I mean, humanity was doing the toddler moment. I don't know. And look at what it says here. God said, who told you that you were naked? Of all the things, Don, that were conditions, why was being naked the most important thing for God to start with? You know, sometimes if you watch somebody smarter than you and not think you know it all, you'll start knowing something you don't know. And I said, Lord, the, the tree, the, the serpent, the, the place of authority, and you want to start with they're naked? You know what I heard him say, John? Nothing works if you don't have my covering. Nothing works without my covering. Why are you talking to God about why his stuff isn't working when he doesn't even see you yet? He doesn't even see you or hear you. Come out of the bushes. Face your being scared of what God's asking of you. I was called into the ministry. Everybody I knew that's called the ministry. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid to answer a call to the ministry. God will send me as a missionary to the Amazon. You know, if God sent everybody that was afraid he was going to send them to the Amazon, if he really did that, the Amazon would be the most on fire place on the planet. I mean, piranhas would just come up to the water and go, oh, I won't bite you. You're a believer. I mean, you know, I mean, just be one miracle after another. The Amazon would be like the Garden of Eden. But no, everybody's afraid of what God's going to do to them. How did God and the devil switch places in our minds? But anyway, here's the priority of God. We got to fix this naked thing. We got to fix this naked thing. I was, uh, I was up in New York, and my granddaughter, for some reason, we, we were down in the apartment while everybody was up on the roof playing, and my wife and others' family were there. And for some reason, Lulu decided she wanted to go butt naked and run around in the apartment. I got a picture of it. And my son said, you better be careful. Apple goes through those pictures. And I said, let him bring it on. <laughs> and I mean, she was just butt naked and happy as she could be. She didn't know she was naked. And she was running around happy as she could be. And I went, and well, you don't know it's Lulu unless, because all you see is, 
her from behind because it moved so fast. But anyway, but I got to thinking about this. Adam and woman hid. They knew they were naked. They knew they were ashamed. Do you know what that is? That's a like lack of righteousness. That there's something in my life that should be covered and hidden because I'm ashamed of it. Yeah, I've seen Christians have been covering and hiding sins they've done for decades. And when they finally admit it and get free, it's like they float. It's like they're free. And um, I thought, what is the clothing of God? Look, if you would, please, at Psalm 145. You get anything out of this? Because I'm telling you if you, don't, if you don't have the covering, then you're invisible to God. Amen. They were clothed in the glory. Look at this, Psalm 145, <clears throat> verse 9. So is God good? So when God blesses every good and perfect gift cometh down from God Amen. in whom there's no variableness of turning. And it's a perfect gift and it says and a perfect act of giving. So if things aren't good, then some other God just showed up. Let's get rid of him. If some other God showed up and moved in, somehow that God thinks he has entrance. We need to send that dog to Bible school. Amen? But somehow something happened that made him have entrance. See, God didn't see Adam and woman, but the devil did. How many would rather be invisible to the devil than invisible to God? Thank you. Verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over or a covering over all his works. The covering or the clothing is his Hesed, H-E-S-E-D, it's covenant mercy. It's not just mercy, it's mercy that's in a covenant, meaning I will make a covenant. My mercy will never depart from you. Amen. Now, you know what mercy is? Mercy isn't just forgiveness. It's not just, no, forgiveness is forgiveness. Mercy is mercy. Mercy is what keeps your past from affecting your future. Did you, did you see what I said? Your past from affecting your future. That covering in time is where you put the now of faith. You operate in faith under that and you're highly visible to God. Some of you have done things that's become highly visible to the enemy. Anything involving coverings and authority, don't mess with it. I mean, being a prophet, there's been times I've watched over my life people mess with the prophetic gift, and I'm like, you know, and my wife's like, did you see what happened? I said, sometimes, honey, I feel like a monster. I'm serious, because I'm just Don. And people smart off to and do things with and disrespect the gift. And it swings back and hits them like a rake the wrong way up. God didn't do that. Being outside the mercy did that. Being outside the mercy did that. Jesus said, you will not be blessed until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, if you 
despise the gift of God, then you get in the opposite. See, God has done it all and has given it all. But that doesn't mean that you don't have results to things. Somebody said, well, you don't earn the blessings. No, but the wages of sin are death, so you get a paycheck there. Now, my suggestion is don't cash it. Go ahead and set fire to it and tell God, hey, <laughs> I'm walking out of this job. Go to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians 11, verse 10. I'm just going to throw this right at you, and then we'll figure it out. For this cause ought the woman to have authority, is what it is in the Greek, authority on her head because of the angels. Now, see, back then there was a custom of head covering. And Paul was trying to say, you know, it's a custom, whatever. It's not a theology, it's not a doctrine, it's not a law. But there was this head covering. He was trying to explain, well, you know, women usually have longer hair and men don't, blah, blah, blah. See, here's what happens. People get caught up in metaphors. Well, metaphors are caught up in the time they were written. you got to have revelation and understanding. And so women wore head coverings to show they were submitted to the authority of their husband. Now, boy, you say that in America and you just get a fight on your hands. I don't care. So I've spent most of my life fighting. So, but the point is, truth is truth, whether you fight it or not. And so, they, but they wore a head covering to show they were in submission. And I don't know what the problem is submitting to authority. I mean, screw it. I love submitting to authority. That way, if there's a problem, it's, it's their fault. It's not my fault. It's their fault. I did what I was told. Now, submitting to authority doesn't mean you just blindly obey something you know is wrong. Because Peter said, whether it's right for us to obey you or any human, we, we must obey the Lord. He told us to preach the gospel. So, and guess what? God delivered him from Rome's persecutions over and over and over. So, let's look at this. It says here that a man, verse 7, ought not to cover his head for as much as he is in the image and the what? Glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man. For the man is not the woman, but the woman is of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man, for this cause. So we were created for him. And he covered us with his tender mercies. We're his. We're his bride. His bride likes being under authority. Somebody talked about humility. It's like it's lowering yourself. That's not humility. 1 Peter 5 says, humble yourself under the hand of God. People don't like to be under something until it rains. People don't like to be under something until it's a benefit they want in their flesh. But I'm telling you, we need to learn to live under this covering. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we are spirit, soul, and body. You know, some of you think I'm like lost up here. I know exactly where I am. I'm trying to figure out where you are. Spirit, soul, and body. 
Chandra, that means that if you live right, your spirit's always over your soul. Your human spirit is always over your soul, which we know if we're Christians, guess what? God is over our spirit. What is the heart? It's the spirit and soul combined. There's a true heart is what Hebrew says. Well, then there's a false one. You know what a false heart is? When the soul, the feelings, the emotions, the will, the mind rules what the spirit knows is true. That's not being covered, that's uncovered. So everybody say spirit over soul. See, this is God's order, spirit over soul, which then that's a heart, heart over body, right? And then you start taking the person and husband over wife, parents over children. You know, there's authority. God has an order, a structure. Now, it is an ordinance of God that a soul must be covered by a spirit. Why does the woman have authority on her head? Because of what? Because of the angels. Well, you know, there's not just friendly angels. A third of them fell. So what God's saying is, I want authority and I want them to have a testament, a testimony. Let them wear something. Let them do something to show the devils and fallen angels, I'm under authority. Why? Because any demon when you are not covered by your own human spirit, when you're not living in the spirit, that demon tells God, that's a soul and it doesn't have a spirit on it. I have the right to be on that if I want to. Don't tell me if you start living by your emotions and your own self-will and your mind trying to figure life out that you won't attract some problems especially when you were being led by the Spirit and you obviously got off the beaten path by telling God no. You know what your problem is? You're naked. You're uncovered. You need to get covered before you start doing things because His mercy is over all His works. Are you following me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, let's just worship Him for a minute. Father, we bless you. Healing is your works. Abundance is your works. But let's go further than that, Lord. Not just what you do for us, but what you do through us for others. Operating in the power of your spirit to set others free. Lord Jesus, we want your covering. Forgive us, sir. Forgive us, sir, for wanting to be on our own until we need you. Lord, you are not here for us to tell you when you should go and fetch something. You're here because you're our God and we're under your authority. Amen. And Lord, let us not be like Adam and woman and say, well, someone told us we're naked. We're not covered. Lord Jesus, you tell us we're covered and we are. Thank you for your tender mercies over us, over us. Glory to God. Let your mercy stop our past from affecting our future. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, let your tender mercies cover us and make us invisible to the devil and make us where you can see us all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everybody said, amen. Did you get anything out of this? Huh? Did you? Really? What did you get out of it? Don, what'd you get out of it? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you get out of it? Anybody else? Huh? You said you got something out of it. You have to be covered. What? You have to be covered. You have to be covered. 
See, what happens is if you're not covered, that's a problem. And all we see faith as is something to fix problems. So then we just run off like little faith warriors trying to make everything work. And God's like, who told you you were needed? <laughs> Are you hearing me? God's looking at you like, who told you you're necessary? You're not needed? Go back and start over. And stay under the mercy. I'll do it all. Amen? How many have ever felt like God's like, okay, everybody, stop. Don't do it. I'll do it. Amen. Well, I try to let God do it. but it Yeah, but you're invisible right now. God doesn't even see you. God doesn't even see you. Are you hearing me? Are you actually raising your hand? Do you know what's funny about Emily? We would all be around the dinner table. And and she would raise her hand when she needed to talk. She would. And we'd be like, yes, Emily. Just a minute, honey. Yeah. Jesse Davis, are you sending me questions? Oh, really? What if I don't want to? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, Emily. Nothing works without God's covering. What causes co covering? What are the indicators that you are covered? What are the indicators that you aren't or the areas of your life aren't? First of all, there is no areas of your life that gets covered. You're either covered or you're not. Your covering happens because of humility and submission. So... But anyway, what, let me start out with what causes covering. God has already caused it. His mercy is over all His works. It's there. It's like you're under it all the time. You have to do things to get out from under it. That's the critical point. Arrogancy, disobedience, uh, fear, you know, anything that if you were in God's place, it would hurt you. People think God gets mad. No, eh, nah, God loves you. It's more like you hurt him. Amen. You grieve him and you hurt him. And, uh, and I felt the presence of God come all over me. It's like he wants you to know that. He doesn't get mad at you. He gets hurt. Because he loves you and he wants what's good for all of us. So, I mean, honestly, humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. The hand of God's the word of God. Thinking and speaking before reading. I do it. I know you do it. Your mom told me in New York, yep. Yeah, that's your fault. You gave your daughter that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What are you, you're supposed to be on my side. No, she said, no, no, no I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> you know, you ask God for the right woman and then you get it. 
and then you get it and get it and get it. But anyway, I love you, honey, if you're watching this. So praise God. But does that help at all, Emily? Okay. It's more like being under the covering is walking in the Spirit. Being under the covering is living by the Holy Ghost and living in the Spirit. We think of faith living by faith. Faith living is in the Spirit living. But see, faith to us is the victory. Faith is a shield. Faith is a battle. You've got a defined goal and you've got an end point. That's not faith with God. That's like kindergarten and grade school faith. But God wants you to have a faith with no event horizon. It's just always flowing. Amen. And you're living in the blessing. God wants you to live in the blessing. Why? Because he blessed them and then told them to be fruitful. We're trying to go be fruitful without getting the blessing. Amen. And that's what the covering is, the blessing. And, you know, it's, it's all about just, are you too busy for Jesus? I'm, I'm sorry again, Martha, but um, I know my wife's up in New York. She's probably going to watch this. But, you know, when Jesus went to Martha and Mary's home, Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha was running around taking care of everything. And Jesus looked at her and said, Martha, you're busy about many things. Mary picked the one thing that cannot be taken from her. Have you chosen things that can be taken from you? Don, you talked about the battle to trust things that are physical and financial. Can they be taken from you? You better believe it in a heartbeat. Trust the things that can't be taken. And those things will keep the things that can be taken. Only if you keep your eyes on him. Look not at things seen. Remember what I taught you before? Look not, fear not. I'll let you go dig those teachings out. But anyway, just when you look at things, you alter their movements. Because the Bible says, look not at things seen, but at things unseen. Because when that happens, the things unseen begin to change the things you see. Amen. All right, let's stand on our feet. We're going to pray for Jesse's mom who went into surgery. Glory to God. <clears throat> Glory to God. You know... She's battling a, uh, where she, they put a knee replacement in. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, there's all kinds of spiritual things that I deal with you don't know anything about. I just do it for you. But he said, it is an unnatural act for me to heal something a man made and put in her body. Now, if you've got the faith, I can get rid of it and replace it with her real need. And I heard the Lord say, but you don't. I went, oh, thanks. But he said, just trust me. Amen. See, I heard the Lord say, it's hard for you to believe a promise I give you when you don't trust me. How do I know I trust God? When things are going the way I decided they shouldn't. Yeah. And I start getting this attitude like, why didn't you check with me first, God? Because I figured this all out. How many have been guilty of that? Amen. Come on, confession's good for the soul. Somebody need to raise both hands. That would be me. <laughs> and you know, because... I'm a visionary. Visionaries envision what's going to come to pass. You got to be flexible with your vision because when it goes, you got to go, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Because 
You may chart a straight course, but you got to be able to keep your ship when it's in the when it's in the sea, tossed to and fro. Keep it on track. I'm telling you, Father God, right now, thank you for bringing Cheryl to the point of no pain. Amen. Bringing Cheryl to the point of healing where she can function without restriction. And we thank you for it. Lord, we know that her body's got something some man made and that's just alien to you. But at the same time, that's your daughter. And I believe she is covered with the tender mercies of your spirit in Jesus' name. And I know, I know, I know. I know that man-made thing is not your works. But I thank you, your mercy is over her. And everything that she's involved with, no infection, no pain, freedom, the ability to move and function. Thank you, Lord, for your healing powers. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Make sure you go and greet these hippies these faith hippies. Did you know that your grandparents are a bunch of they're hippies? Yeah. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So greet them and tell them you love them. What you, you know? I know. Now you decide you want to give a well, testimony because God said you need to give a testimony. Oh, God said. Yeah. But He didn't check in with me. Oh, Go ahead. Know. Here, hey, come on. Thirty-seven years ago. I walked out of prison uh, after serving seven years. And, uh, you know, I was just sitting back there, and God says, you know what? You got more, so much to be grateful for. I, I mean, I walked out of prison with $100. I have five rental properties or five houses. Now. I have now. I have five houses. I have five, soon to be five grandchildren. I have three wonderful children. and. Every one of them has their own house, you know, and it's like, God, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what to say, but I love you and thank you. I mean, I've never thought I would ever have this type of life. I've been all over the world and it's, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, you know what, John, that's being covered Amen. with this Amen. mercy. That's covering right there, what you just saw. That's what you just saw. Amen. Find some, find somebody and hug them and like kind of hold them a little longer than is normal and just see what happens, all right? God bless you. Love one another.